I'm gonna fucking die. So I figured it out. I I am I know what's going on with my wife. It's something that needs to be addressed. Yeah. And they're all a little bit under the weather at the moment. The court, the Superior Court, has this corrupt judge named George F. Burr, and, and, and Thomas D. Wong, and, and Gail Colifer, and for that matter, Teresa Badeau, Stephanie Bowick. Uh, I'm sure that Stephanie Bowick is actually an outstanding person. Collar S. Pinder is an amazing judge, and he deserves an a Nobel Prize of some sort for consideration of the people being a civil servant of sorts like referee that left honor and judge like judicial behavior to a standard that is high and worthy of being repeated it sounds like the Judge I read about that had AIDS in the eighties. It was a presiding judge and his name. <sighs> he was open about it. Anyway, so my wife's narcolepsy is an autoimmune disorder. My wife's had fifteen or so major autoimmune emergency room visits in her time with me. It took that stack of paper that it comes with for me to fully devour the problem to a point of understanding. Emmanuel Mignon explains the details of narcolepsy's trigger. Um, um, influenza causing the brain to be confused by hypocretin. Hypocretin, a chemical that we release in our blood and through our brain, regulates our hippocampus and our hypothalamus and so on, produces, you know, the veins and whatnot that allows the brain to regulate its sleep patterns and its emotion and movement and things. So the brain takes the hypocretin and when it gets a cold with certain flus, develops an immune response to that. Now, the different colds we get through our life are confused, confusable to the brain to be similar to what a hypocrite is. And there are other aspects of certain influences and viruses that can parallel other portions of the brain's drug response or hypocrite response or other neural pathogen. And you then have the problem of if you get a cold or you have your immune system attacked that it will trigger the narcolepsy and it causes sleep or induced randomness with cataplexy usually but specific blood tests to show what kind of narcolepsy you have. No one knows specifically what the type 2 is from, but basically it's the same idea. And so this book called Influenza a long time ago that was really good showed results of studies that were bringing back people with schizophrenia from the flu, right? And all kinds of variants, basically based on the same kind of responses. The brain is the most complex you know, organ of the body, and it, it specifically regulates so many neural 
pharmacological balancing systems that have to be in balance to work that that let's take candida the vaginal and or foot fungus foot fungus but comes in many forms for women can be in the brain and we are made up of five more organisms than the biology of ourselves the bacteria that live on us you know those five bacteria that are beyond us actually because there are a whole bunch that we live with are our gut and our guts can check constantly to balance itself the candida will be one of them and we have to regulate how it happens otherwise it will eat us literally and we have no problem regulating that usually but people with narcolepsy or an autoimmune response system deficiency or a virus can lack the capability to regulate those things and so one trigger can cause another trigger and the dominoes can begin to spiral out of out of control so we want to blame someone's schizophrenia on triggers but that's us allowing the environment to be the the blaming tool but I am actually making the argument that being homeless by the court's hands causes a worsening of my wife's mind, life, and everything else because she did lose her home. She is fighting these forces. She is in a loop trapped by the thoughts. We are fighting over whether or not things are filed right. We're fighting over this, that she has a brain fog and so overcome her in the last two years. We blame it on a miscarriage or this or that. Well, you know what? The body was affected by the miscarriage. It was affected by being infected, by being a puncture uterus by UCLA, by having Melina or the IUD inserted in her and having it overgrow. And first of all, not even acknowledging that she was narcoleptic. So then they put this IUD in her and cause her the horrific um, waking up from a surgery of, from miscarriage because my wife bleeds out during pregnancies and almost dies and needs a blood transfusion every time and it's because they don't respect the complications that are going to come with someone whose autoimmune system responds with shutting down they should listen to us the husband who's seen it before the doctor who's written it down before i mean jesus christ why are they running a fucking fast miscarriage fast abortion shop at a sub fucking hospital of ucla not at the main campus. And why are they using students to do something that's so like precise and specific? To teach it? I'm sorry. It's a specialist thing. It shouldn't just be a top thing. We're already trying to kill it with the Republican front through getting rid of Roe versus Wade. This is bullshit. So when they insert the IUD, after getting consent from a woman who is narcoleptic and asleep and having sleep-wake disorder or disturbances, and can't actually be cognitive, conscious, or aware of whether she signed this or that, or being told about it. Never given a pamphlet to even see what the side effects would be. <laughs> and then they try to get away with saying, oh, you signed this, there's no fucking signature. The fucking person is disabled. I have the right of decision, because she's disabled to the point of having a person with a power of attorney who is her caregiver, who is her host, and could not leave the house, because we are specifically under attack. That's why you were given my phone number and the ability to call me back and talk to me and communicate with me. The doctors did none of this. They just rushed through shit. So anyway, two miscarriages later and two almost dying's on the table later, I know what's going on. My, but my wife ends up with a Molina IUD pregnancy um, blocker. And somehow, right before she gets it removed, finds out she's pregnant again. That's even more... Like, what the fuck? Anyway, let's get back to the point here, is that that punctured uterus turns into a prolapsed vaginal wall, which turns into candida in the vagina from sex and, you know, fingers in the vagina, this and that, through erotica and wanting to know oneself, wanting to use your body in a marriage that you love the person with, having great sex, and then ultimately living in a hotel that the fucking were forced into because 
we we used twenty six thousand dollars at the Bonaventure, which first of all we tried to use it on Airbnb, but they just scammed us and stole our money because the courts forced us to leave our house because they stole our house after a writ was executed improperly because the case setting in seven three and seven four was both defaulted on the case in seven four when neither of them could have been defaulted because there was no mailbox at seven four's address because fourteen and half Ewing Street doesn't exist. So there was no way to receive service process. So when they get a default in one half of the property, they use it and file it in both because the clerks are paid off, specifically Ava Kurashari and Isabel Jane, and maybe Valerie Bailey, but for sure, and Steve Tembulador, and maybe Diaz, whatever his name is, but for sure, Ava Kurashari and I, Isabel Jane, have worked for Rebecca Hufford Cohen for 10 years plus doing the same exact filings where they go summon to complaint, proof of service, um, default judgment, um, all on the same day, right off the bat. And then they don't give a fuck that they have to go to a hearing about the default judgment being phony, proof of service. Oh, yeah, proof of service. Um, the, the proof of service is always from Keith David Williams, the actor who was in Paul Haggis of Scientology's film crash and Keith David Williams is actually living in Florida so he hires an actor who plays him to imitate his yes voice because it's a very good backstory you know, I have a great voice that's why I do the process serving to make some extra cash I was in Apocalypse Now or whatever that fucking movie is but he didn't serve our house because we have a ring camera and you can see the exact times that he indicates that he was there for a process of service there was no person at all on the property except for my wife in the yard and no one talks to her no mail is delivered no person comes to her and there's a neighbor to witness that because my wife is basically stuck in a brain fog on the steps in the yard and I who was supposedly served too am in the kitchen 75 feet away inside the house hanging out with my hubby bird which is on camera as well The same case that had already been tried and adjudicated, and I won, because it was a three-year suit with a trial in court, eight hours long, and my wife and I won possession of the property for the defendants and against the plaintiff 100%. And so there will be no way to depose this after, from 1161, or from 1160 to 1179 on the CCP, we beat every single civil code of procedure that had anything to do with forcible or unlawful detainer, all of it every subsection you name it and they didn't even get into the facts that we were trying to even get them with this was just based on the fact of the matter they weren't our landlord and we never admitted anything other than fucking fuck them they're fucking breaking and entering and it's noted by caller s Pinder who caught them in a lie in summary judgment that he denied so jacqueline grace Pelez, who barrages us with interrogatories discovery and attempts to kill us with 26 or 7 false default judgments and fails miserably. She makes up a lie that there's a nuisance abatement issue from the get-go when she wasn't even the lawyer in the beginning. She was hired after a month of their attempting to do this shit without a lawyer. Tiddy and her husband attempted to serve us. They lie after they fail and get a lawyer to sign on their live verification that Peñas Peñon did it on a specific date and time. But he lies throughout the entire court case, and Judge Effer never checks the videos one time to see that when I said, of course, yes, it's in the video. I do know what you're talking about, because I knew what the judge was referring to when he was referring to Peños Peños' statement, because Peños was lying point blank. So I said, yes, yes, I do know what you're talking about. It's in the video. And Judge Effer never reviewed the, the ring video to see the facts of the matter. In fact, he just confused who was the owner at the end of the case, flip-flopping the original plaintiff for the amended complaint plaintiff. However, that would invalidate the entire case, and they run with that. The next lawyer, Rebecca Hubbard Cohen, runs with the fact that it's flip flopped and attempts another nuisance abatement strategy, but it, it enacts the variation on it that we would have been drug manufacturers or gun ammunition manufacturers and use a certain fonts and fake letter from the city attorney of the Northeast Division, Gabrielle Taylor. Uh, which she didn't actually write. I mean, I'd they had nothing to do with. And she submits this to basically invoke a nuisance abatement 
uh, health and safety standard of eviction that wouldn't have flown either and then tried to use tenancy at will when it was already noted that it wasn't a tenancy at will in the prior case. And so they just lied, again, point blank. Jacqueline Grace Plus and Rebecca Hopper Cohen. And then they partner up with Peter Wodinski, the appearance lawyer. No one ever appeared except for Peter Wodinski. And then Daniel Scott Duda they paired up with. He came in and subverted our quiet title action. Our quiet title action was specifically fucked with by, by um, Daniel Scott Duda and for Chetty Shapiro, who, which they do this by attempting to unrelate our related cases that we related. Because on February 2nd, 2021, we'd filed our quiet title. This is before 7-3 and 7-4 were filed back in July or something like that. No, September. September of 2021. So when we filed... Because we beat our case in July 13th for 2828 um, STUD0, 20 STUD0, 2828, the first case. We win three years long, right? Then we file our quiet title. It's a civil case, STCV, 43 something, 06, or something like that. And then they file 21 STUD0, 2828, 20, I'm sorry, 21 STUD0, 2273, and 02274. Duplicate frivolous filings of a case that had already been tried. And they just try to manipulate the facts to fit it. After they'd already gotten an amended complaint on 2828 to allow unlawful and forcible detainer at the very last second. And still failed. After a 13-day deliberation, we won 100% of the merits. And was given nothing in the judgment, which was retarded. Because we should have been given our costs, the lawyer's fees, the uh, filing fees, the everything you name it, you know. And the damages for how many days we're displaced from our home. For at this point, it's now been over... Um, 365 because my wife and I are disabled and do you know what it's like to be homeless and kidnapped? We were kidnapped for three months after that eviction on December 16th, 2021 by Andrew Rubicalba, the sheriff who shows up at 3.21 a.m. to attempt to post and not knock and not serve personally. Even though we're home and awake and inside, he doesn't actually ring the doorbell, knock on the door, attempt to fucking call out anyone's name. He just quietly tries to hide the fact he taped it somewhere or placed it somewhere didn't even find it my neighbor found it and showed it to me the next day only one notice not two by the way because he was seen walking away with the papers that he brought in the video stumbling down the stairs what looked like he's drunk Andrew Rubicalba the 210000 or $30,000 a year fucking deputy sheriff who was a family member of mayor of Santa Barbara and the um, president of the commissioners of the LADWP. So he's a family political hire that is just a goon and a goo-boo. Goo -boo, goo -boo, a, uh, he's a go-bro, you know, he's a fucking putz. It's like, <laughs> you'll die if you fall. If these rocks are, these rocks are slippery, you'll die if you fall. And that's because he was drunk the night before. So he says that to his or the week before, that's what he says to his uh, co-workers who are extraordinarily fucked up in the head except for Aguayo. Aguayo is a wonderful individual, seemingly very honest sheriff. He was what seemed like the leader of the pack, but he handles helping us and uh, attempts to get us our papers, but somehow through the manipulation of Rubicaba, we get our Motorcycle stolen, our bicycle stolen, our everything in our house stolen, actually, our medicine, our phones. And what's disturbing is that Andrew Rubicalma knows that he's dealing with a fake locksmith that's been hired by the plaintiff that's actually a subcontractor that's actually broken and entered into our house before. And they're both on the same phone system. They both answer the phone at the same time from a group text or call simultaneously in synchronization like clockwork. And then the Mexican looking and it sounding locksmith uses a crowbar to break the window doesn't actually enter doesn't drill out the lock just fucking puts a chain through the old hole in the door after he takes the lock out and they're smart locks those locks could have been replaced by computer reprogramming and that was over four thousand dollars in locks of the entire house for that kind of technology you know this is more than a three hundred dollar violation of a person's rights wrong door entry and the house was labeled 1411 hoosted on the street with a 911 Diamond reflective official sign had a mailbox that said Houston 14 
11. It had a brand new mailbox. It had two no trespassing signs at both entrances, and they were specific, large, easy to read, and specifically blocked government, officials, sheriffs, police, and anyone not authorized except for the mailman and fire department under an emergency only. And it was a revocation of implied license, which outlined specific cases and it was from the Rural Landowners Association. It would hold up in court. It is a $10,000 violation per trespass and is specifically trespassed upon us by Richard Johnson and Chetty Shapiro and 11 other agents and the sheriff and the other sheriffs and Joshua Morganson and they all had trespass arrests already filed on them earlier that year. So when Rubicalba conspires to do this, you'd think he'd sign his own writ being completed, but he has a Guayo signature on the final document, even though he's the one on the initial document, and that's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be completed by the same person who starts it. And so there's an attempt to cover that up. And then when we're at the courthouse over the next year, basically outside in the last couple weeks, we were robbed point blank on the day of the one year mark of the fucking what do you call that? Statute of limitations for a person that's not disabled. We are disabled and therefore our statute of limitations extends because it's a quiet time election for fraud, which means there is no end of time. There's a 30-year window because we have a preservation of interest on the property. So those fuckers are fucked and we are suing them all and pulling their bonds. And it doesn't matter how powerful they are. These two kids want their fucking money so we can move to fucking a new country and say, fuck you, Scientology. We don't want to be around you. Fuck you, LA. You need to show that you're corrupt. And fucking get out of your position because your bond has been pulled and you're no longer an authority. You're no longer to work as a government official. You need to find a new career. Get the fuck out because we're Clint Eastwood and you're the fucking dirty sheriff. You're the dirty judge. You're the dirty corrupt one percenter who needs to be fired because this city is being fucking destroyed by that. And the people who understand the corruption are the poverty stricken. The people who deal with this shit. And so that's why experiencing this for the first time for real and seeing how the gang injunctions destroy the city, seeing how these infections oh, fuck my wife up and make her sick. So what I was talking to you about was schizophrenia or schizoidal typal personality disorder. My wife has fog in the brain from candida that she has gotten through being destabilized, <coughs> having her home taken away, being wet-footed, getting dirty hands at a fucking... Our SRO that had an illegal eviction of 40 units with no fucking notice to comply or any fucking 24-hour notice or anything. Just fucking, it would have been actually a 120-day notice to vacate or 90 in an Ellis Act building and it would have Mariachi Plaza. And uh, because of that, no soap, you know what happens. Huh? Sorry. You took a long time. Huh? I said you took a long time. I know. Me? I know what's wrong with you. What's wrong? <laughs> I know exactly what it is. What is it? I can show you. Yeah. I know exactly what it is. It's super rare and uh, a combination of interactions. Uh -huh. And I got to the bottom of it because of Julie Flaggery and fucking oh. Emmanuel Mignon uh -huh. and my knowledge of your medical records and uh -huh. specifically the fact that I've been open minded and paying attention the entire time. The only uh -huh. one who's actually paying attention. And to this day, no one will believe me unless I record it. So what am I doing? Recording it because I don't need some family to undermine us because they don't understand. Because yeah. the matter of fact is, you have drug interactions from your body fucking going through rare fucking attacks that come from influenza that your immune system has developed since you were a child. Every time you've ever gotten sick. Yeah. Oh, he's just scratching. I don't know what he said. He was just scratching. He was just doing it because he's really doing it. Huh? Stop bringing flowers here. Stop bringing grass here. You can get him grass that you can grow or buy in a little patch at a fucking supermarket. You can literally buy the grass, the, the green grass little block at the fucking, at the fucking lessons. Right. Stop bringing him shit from the random plants around here because you don't know what pesticides they use, what water they use, what gray water systems they use. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You're right. Good point. You're not careful. Oh, that's what the, uh, that's what the, uh, that's what the cat was saying. Okay, go ahead. Cats weren't saying shit. You know why? Cats can't talk to you. But, you can believe they can, and let me show you why. What is going on with you is candida related. Candida related? Yes. Candida, so Mignon goes out of his way to describe a very complex understanding of our gut and our 
uh, bacteria. Mm -hmm. And he, so he says there are five more bacteria than there are genes in the body that live on our skin. There are what? Five more bacteria than there are genes in our body uh -huh. that live in our skin at all times. Oh, wow. So there are five bacteria that we have to balance precariously to even live. Oh. To even live. And we, as human beings, have a very, very fine line of balance with that that we don't really challenge much because it is up to the immune system to keep that in check. And so as you're born and start off with a clean slate of the immune system, right, mm -hmm. or not a clean slate, you might be unlucky, but a clean slate as far as what influences you've had yet, you go through life and you get different influences, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as you get them, certain ones mimic certain brain neuro neurochemicals, yeah. right? And so narcolepsy in particular is the mimicking of hippocrete, but other influences have caused, in rare occasions, schizophrenia. Um, oh, really? Specifically, in, uh, throughout the last hundred years, since they've had whole flus that have caused just schizophrenia in general. What the fuck? That's yeah, crazy. The things that we blame schizophrenia on, yeah. like Vietnam or this or that or yeah. environment, uh -huh. is quite possibly a bunch of hogwash because... What? Sure, the environment is everything that you go through, but those are, those are the, those are the systems that you're forced into after the damage has been done by some sort of other situation. Like in our case, the court lies to steal our property because they're greedy, right? Yeah. Because they do their job for greed, right? Yeah. Except for Cholera Sapinder, who is needs a Nobel Peace Prize or some shit. Yeah. Oh, uh, did you? I said he needs one. Oh, yeah. And by doing that, they create a set of damages, right? Uh -huh. The court, right? Yeah. But those damages aren't the reason you are going through mental destabilization. Those damages are what help trigger the destabilization. You know, they're a direct and proximate result. Like your candida, yeah. wet shoe, always outside, fucking ba dirty bathroom, nowhere to wash hands, no soap. Yeah. That's the court's fucking fault that that happened. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's a direct and proximate result, but it's not... Uh, it's not the environment that caused that. It's it's the environment that caused that. It's not, it's not like you can just say, like, blame it, like, homelessness caused my sister to fucking know. It's because these people took shortcuts in city planning and the board of... De Supervisors and city council are corrupt. That the that the LA DWP, sorry, LA DBS inspectors are corrupt because they have no level or standard. They have no graphic design manual. They have no way oh, yeah. to check their documents. Yeah. They have no standardization to keep oh. the system legit. They don't make the bonds easy to pull because they don't want to give out the information. So this city acts in a corrupt faith. So because of that, they cause everyone to suffer. Everybody is forced to suffer because of a lack of implemented security measures to keep people in check. Yeah. So it's not homelessness. It's the city. The city? It's the city of Los Angeles. Oh, the city, yeah. It's the city of Los Angeles deciding that the people who are in power are going to stay in power. And if we don't do something about it as a society, we should eject all these bastards. Yeah. And we should literally only allow people in for a small window of time and we should make sure that they're checked and balanced and that they have literally to come from the bootstraps up not anybody who had money you have to have like less than a fifty thousand dollar income to apply you know like you can't come from fucking millions of dollars you really can't to be in charge of the city you need to come from the poverty Why? because do you deserve a fucking two hundred thousand oh, dollar salary to be Nuri Martinez oh uh, I mean I don't know. Depends. Um, Supplemented food already comes to them. Like, mm -hmm. their housing is, like, is developer paid for? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, what I mean is, uh, like, um, I think people should be paid for their career development over time. You know? Yeah, yeah, but $200,000 for fucking Andrew Rubicalva's yeah. fucking position? Two hundred thirty thousand. He paid $230,000 in 2010. Do you know what? Or 21. Do you know how much he made in 2019? 130000 he made a hundred thousand dollar increase in salary mm -hmm. and doesn't do it and you know where most of it, seventy two thousand of that came from? Unknown. Unknown funds come to him. It says a, like unknown extra money. Just 
randomly finds his paycheck. He's been in 21 lawsuits for police um, and sheriff abuse of power as an expert witness for the person abusing the power. He's caught in an article being an expert witness 21 times for the sheriff's department for their aid to manipulate the sheriff's department for the inside. And then he sues the sheriff's department itself to get himself a higher salary with a group of sheriffs. He's been there for 11 or 12 years. He's definitely in a sheriff's gang. Yeah, I think. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. Without a doubt. His yeah. fucking family member is the commissioner and president of LADWP. His fucking wife is the mayor of Santa Barbara. Wow. Santa Barbara. Yeah, yeah. Can I have some thick blow my nose on the camera? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm really blow my nose. Please don't turn it on. Oh, no. Because it's, it's causing me to sneeze over and over. So, can I see the little towel in the background? Please, 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 please. I can't have a little towel. Yeah, it's in the, oh, my God. Can I have a big towel? I, a big I don't care. I need to blow my nose. It's fucking horrible. Uh-huh. Oh, so, you want to see this? Is it? Uh, yeah. Do you want to oh. see this? Uh, what? What? Why your body is acting the way it's acting. Yeah, totally. You're going to be blown away. Because we do need Mignon. We need Mignon and we need Paul Stamets. Okay. The, the, the answer is literally Stamets and Mignon. I know that sounds drastic, but they're both in Palo Alto. Really? And I found a house. Wow. Uh, in Palo Alto that needs some serious TLC. It's for sale right now. And it closes on December 17th. Okay. And it's only about purchasable from the state um, through a probate auction. Oh, really? And it's and it's two blocks away from Mignon's house. Oh, two blocks away? That's cool. It's Palo Alto. Next to Apple. Of like oh, yeah. ha less than a half a mile from Apple's headquarters. The big circle building? Yeah. The futuristic su circle? Oh, really? Yeah. That's crazy. Um, well, you're, you're going to miss out. No, no, no. I'm giving you an answer that you've been dying for. It explains the brain fog, like point blank. Oh, really? It, addre it addresses it as brain fog, as its name. Really? Yeah. All you gotta do is find me a dollar fifty so I can get some sugar. So I'm gonna headache. Um, I got like wet clothes. I need to dry. Okay, but I need you to see this I'm now. I'm watching you. What show are you right now? I mean, look, I'm listening. You need to take a chill pill and see what's going on. The clothes that need to dry, we can handle that. We turn the heat up, and, okay. and we can even take them to a dryer. Oh yeah, it's vents. We can take them to a dryer, like in a longer mat too. 